Hello friends, I would like to share an interesting critical position from one of my students games. White in this game was rated 1700 on chess.com and played the move queen to d2. Now black has a choice. He can exchange the queens or maintain them on the board. Please pause the video and think what would you play here and what would be your plan with the black pieces. First, let's take a look at what happens if black denies the exchange. For example, queen goes to c7 where we're making this e5 break for white a little bit harder to get. Now white has a very easy plan of probably kingside attack connected to the pawn breaks e5 and f4, f5. Black pieces are really cramped, lacking space and good squares for the moment being, while all of white's army is connected and influencing the king side. In the long run, I'm really scared about the black's king and e5 is going to come very fast. For example, if black tries to make some room for his pieces and moves the knight to f6 so that the bishop would be opened along this diagonal, white plays something like queen c3 to support e5 break even further. Perhaps e5 was already possible, but now we solidify it even more and whether we play bishop d7 or bishop g4 right now white is just going to play e5 say for example takes and takes and now with the subsequent f4 f5 g4 g5 white probably has just a winning kingside attack i think after rook a d8 and a four you could already feel the the pawn breaks coming white's rook starts playing along the open files just disaster for black in a practical game what happens if black does exchange the queens well first of all this way black is going to make sure that an end game is gonna be good for them because after queen takes d2 and knight takes d2, black has a move knight to e5. What do we have here? Well, for white, all of the pawns, or most of them, are fixed on the light squares, which really makes the light square bishop very bad. So any kind of endgame for black against the bishop for with the knight, or light square bishop against white's light square bishop, is really good because white's light square bishop is a bad piece. Not only that, say after a move like bishop c2 or bishop e2, black can solidify the blacks at the position of the knight by playing g5. The purpose of it is to make f4 move harder, which would kick our pony off the e5 square. For example, if white plays g3 and tries to play f4, black has an interesting option of playing g4, where against f4, we can already take and passant, at least for now, we maintain the knight on e5. I think that even if we exchange the knights, endgame is just fantastic for black due to having a good bishop against the bad bishop of white. So exchanging the queens was the right decision because suddenly black's pieces are alive. Um, bishop is also playing in the long term. Of course, this position is closed. We cannot have an amazingly active bishop, but in the long run, this is our good bishop because pawns are most of them in the center on the dark squares. We could play plans like bishop to d7, perhaps break with b5 if we choose to make some action on the queen side. Another reason to exchange the queens was that the only player that could get a kingside attack here is probably white his pieces are simply aiming there you cannot imagine your queen being somewhere here right now and threatening the the white king so this was a critical moment and queen d2 was an absolute critical blunder instead what white should have chosen is a move like queen e2 and just trying to break um, in the center with the move e5 once the bishop um, is opened and we can use the e-file then white can choose to attack the black's king perhaps or play against the the pawn that is going to be a backward than d6 i hope you enjoyed this short positional exercise if you did please do subscribe to my chess channel you can also hire me as your personal chess coach online that's my full-time job at the moment and i'm going to say goodbye and see you in the next video thank you